So uh, let's move on to uh, the new technology to keep an eye on. As I mentioned earlier in, uh, in my discussions here, I like to talk about topics, you know, along the lines of solar, you know, wind power, um, and uh, alternative fuel, hacking, security, and that sort of thing. So uh, actually, Vince, if we just type shop in here, it will give us a link to uh, the shop.highweb.net. So there's a, a link to shop.highweb.net where you can see a list of all my affiliates and uh, get help get good deals and refer to reputable uh, distribution companies that can give you products that uh, you might be interested in. So again, to lead on with this, uh, this is my new technology to keep an eye on section. Uh, I like to talk about all kinds of things, and this week I'm going to talk about a few things. Some of them are kind of uh, just impact technology because we can use these things with technology or we can see that that this is somehow related to technology and when I talk about new technology keep an eye on I'm even talking about things like alternative fuels like biofuels and that sort of thing which a couple of these topics are about biofuels and how they're impacting our world today I'm not going to talk a whole lot on it but I def definitely just want people to be aware of what's going on here so uh, new technology to keep an eye on story number one is a malicious microprocessor opens new doors for attack. So for many years, uh, you know, malware and software that has been that's been on computers has just been software on a computer. This is a a new breakthrough that they're able to hack the microprocessor. So on Tuesday of this week, some researchers at the University of Illinois were able to demonstrate how they altered a computer chip to grant attackers backdoor access to the computer. What they did is they basically changed 1,341 logic gates on this computer or on this microprocessor that had more than a million of these gates and with that they were able to gain backdoor access to this computer. Uh, this attack was done on a, a programmable processor running Linux operating system and they were able to inject malicious firmware into the chip's memory through this method. So this is like the ultimate backdoor, said one of the researchers, and uh, there's, there's been nothing like this to date. So I'm also going to have the link to this entire news story in the show notes if anyone's interested, but that's pretty incredible that they're able to now take software down to the microprocessor level and develop backdoors that will completely go around the operating system right down to the hardware level and, and sneak into the system. So that's uh, a dangerous story that uh, you definitely want to keep an eye on with if you're interested in security and that sort of thing. Story number two for technology to keep an eye on is biofuel rule will do more harm than good. In the UK, fuel for cars and trucks must contain a certain level of biofuel today. And uh, what's happening here is because of the, the requirements on biofuel being put into, food, into the vehicles, it's causing food prices to go much higher. And a lot of uh, you know, countries and that sort of thing have dependency on buying food. And because this is causing food prices to go much higher, these countries aren't able to afford this food. Also in this study, it shows that tailpipe, em tailpipe emissions from burning biofuels is, is not that much different than the tailpipe emissions from burning fossil fuels. So there's something to be said there, um, you know, in, in what we're doing with our future planning on trying to come up with these biofuels and whether we're really thinking about this right. The story goes on to say right now, rainforests are actually being destroyed to make way for biofuel crops in places like Indonesia, stuff like that. So um, a, a, a campaigner at Greenpeace said this destruction leads to massive greenhouse gas emissions that completely undermines the point of so-called green fuels. So this is kind of a scary topic and even in this country we're putting a lot of focus on biofuels and trying to figure out how to come up with you know alternative energies that are going to uh, going to help us stop the greenhouse gases that are supposedly uh, destroying our environment. 
uh, if people want to see real green transportation solutions make a difference in their lives, we better explore things like public transportation and, and smarter cars that actually just burn less fuel rather than just looking at purely alternative fuels. So uh, the story goes on to say most people would be horrified to know that the government is putting biofuels in our petro when the damage they do to the forest could make the climate change even worse. So there, I'm going to post the link to that entire story and my story number three here kind of leads along the same lines of uh, what I was talking about there. So let's keep an eye on alternative fuels and, <laughs> and someone in chat says I want a horse. So yeah that's a good thing. I've got my story number four here is something really cool along these lines and I'm going to continue to feature um, you know alternative energy topics and you know solar energy and wind turbine. I found a really cool wind turbine uh, story this week, but I'm gonna I might try to bring that in next week. So story number three here goes along the same lines. It says we drive while they starve. The mass diversion of North American grain harvest into ethanol plants for fuel is reaching its political and moral limits. The reality is that people are dying. While we continue to drive our cars, there's people in these third world countries that are dying. It states that 232 kilograms of corn to fill a, f it, it takes 232 kilograms of corn to fill a 50 liter car tank, or I did some quick maths on that, or that's 421 kilograms to fill what we generally have in the States, a 20 gallon uh, car tank which that could also, so the, the 50 liter car tank could feed one child for an entire year. Our 20 gallon car tank could feed two children for an entire year. And uh, what's happening here is uh, we divert right now 18 percent of our grain output for ethanol this year. And we're hoping to by the year 2015 to divert 45 percent into biofuel type ethanol programs and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a, a serious situation that we have here, which, you know, in our country we're spoiled because we don't have to spend so much money for food. The story goes on here saying that the risk is unrest and spread to countries where 50 to 60 percent of their income goes towards their food. So uh, riots are going on just because people can't get rice. People have even died because they're rioting about the cost of food. With the global population going from 6.5 billion today to 9.5 billion around mid-century, mid uh, we're going to have a, a lot of things to learn and we, we definitely don't want to learn it the hard way. So we need to continue to think about you know, these biofuels, are we doing what's right? And the idea again of cutting down rainforests to grow biofuels seems seems kind of stupid. One, uh, it says, seems profoundly stupid, said Professor John Beddington, Britain's chief scientific advisor. So, and, and then just to end this story up, it says, the world intelligence has been asleep at the wheel while we rage over global warming, global hunger, and it has swept in underneath the radar screen. So we're putting all this focus into all these biofuels and that sort of thing when we should really be focusing on feeding the world. Biofuel rules could make millions of people homeless and like they're tearing down rainforests to start growing biofuels. It doesn't make sense at all and uh, we just need to pay attention. Again, I'll have the entire link to this news story in the show notes and uh, if you guys are interested you could read read more information on that. So uh, new technology to keep an eye on story number four. This is awesome. So while we're focused on biofuels, some backyard mechanic in his garage invented an air-powered motorcycle. So this is awesome. This motorcycle is powered on air. Of course it works exactly as he described which isn't all that exciting. The top speed limit was only 18 miles an hour and it would only go seven miles before the pressure ran out. But after all, this was made by some guy in his garage. And, uh, you know, he, he states with, you know, with a lot of tweaking and that sort of thing, he could obviously make his thing a lot more uh, efficient. And the, the idea of, you know, the advantages of this using air pressure stored as energy versus batteries is obviously the contamination to the environment, you know, how fast it takes him to charge his uh, compressed air into that. Someone in chat says India has compressed air automobiles. So that's, you know, as we're focusing on biofuels and that sort of thing, why don't we focus on 
you know, look at, try to look at the big picture and, you know, hopefully we'll make some of the right decisions and not let the government control everything that we're, we're trying to do here by, you know, with the fuel demands and that sort of thing. When we might be able to just run our vehicles off of compressed air or off of things like water, you know, and that sort of thing. You know, so that, you know, the, the problem is, is with the compressed air, they're not able to store a lot of energy in such a, a small place. So uh, with that being said, it's going to be really interesting to see where this compressed air goes, you know, and they're, they're a lot cheaper to, to do that, but, uh, um, you know, it's, again, this story came from a, a resource called EcoGeek, that's E-C-O-G-E-E-K, and I do a lot of, I go there at least two or three times a week, and I'll also post the link to this news story in uh, the show notes, and if anyone is interested, they could go uh, check that out further. But uh, an air-powered motorcycle, really cool. All right, so let's move on in the 